Hey Gizmo China fans, this is Adam again, tech editor with Gizmo China, and I'm here to do a different kind of phone review. I'm not going to review the phone itself, um, but I'm going to review the camera and the camera system and options with the Xiaomi Mi 9. In this, I'm going to take a look at the onboard camera app, and I'm going to show all of the different options that there are. And uh, we're going to go over the ones that I like the most, obviously. And then I'm going to go over some examples and show you things I like, things I don't like. Uh, but a lot of things I like, i got to tell you, this is a really, really good system. Uh, the three cameras on the back, I love it. Ultra-wide, standard, and telephoto, it works. It works well. It's only a little larger of a camera bump, so come on. Let's go ahead and uh, let's take a look. Let's talk real quick about the actual cameras and the sensors themselves. There are three cameras on the back. There's a 48 megapixel, one half inch Sony IMX586 sensor. It's the standard lens. It has a f1.75 aperture, so it lets in plenty of light. The secondary telephoto lens is 12 megapixels and f2.2. It also has a two by optical zoom, so that's pretty good. The last one is the ultra wide angle lens, 16 megapixel, 117 degree ultra wide angle lens. It's also f2.2. All right, so let's take a look and see what we have here. Let's uh, start off with the slow motion. Slow motion is pretty cool on this piece because it's 1080p throughout. That's right, you can change in the settings the high frame rate resolution from 720p or 1080p and it stays that way throughout 120, 240, which is my favorite by the way, and 960. 960 looks pretty good. Here we go, take a look. Now the problem with 960 in my opinion is that it chooses kind of when it wants to the when to record and it can record not the right time like not when you want and i found that oftentimes it did record when i didn't want it to so uh go ahead and uh i would recommend keeping it on 240 frames per second short video is pretty cool it gives you wide availability this is my favorite part, probably. It gives you the option to speed up or slow down the video that you take. And yeah, here's some examples of that. It's pretty fun, as you can see. You can also add music to it. It's pretty cool. Uh, you can <laughs> add some fun filters. My favorite one is this one here, where you can black, blacken out basically everything in the background, it, black and white, except for the subject, which stays in color, which is pretty cool. And then you have your filters and beautify mode which can be a lot of fun as well i if you're trying to be serious i wouldn't recommend using a lot of beautify video mode has a lot to talk about so let's go ahead and uh open up the settings and you can see the video quality options it gives you 720p 1080p at 30 and 60 frames per second and ultra hd 4k at 30 frames per second and 60 frames per second now you cannot use the wide angle lens at 60 frames per second only the 30 frames uh 4k 30 and 60 frames 1080p and 720p are even available here let me go ahead and show you that so i've switched to the wide ultra wide angle mode let's go to the settings video quality and notice the 60 frames per second is not there. So let's go ahead and remove that option there. It does also give you a beautify option. And uh, there you go. The cool thing here is it will track subject. You tap on an object and it will find whatever it's looking at and it will create this rectangular box around it. And it will kind of bounce around in the frame a little bit until you have your video. And it will be tracking whatever you're looking at. So it's pretty cool here, go ahead and take a look. Now, also in the video mode, it offers the time lapse. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at some time lapse options here. Here's the time lapse interval. Here's the 4 by option, which gives you a 0.12 second interval and is basically like regular video, just a little less. And then here's a 5 second interval, which is really choppy. So, depending on what kind of video you're looking for, I mean, you can go all the way up to one minute intervals. So, it's pretty sweet. Uh, the options in the time lapse availability. Now, let's go to photo, which is where there's a lot of really cool stuff. You have HDR, you have uh, AI, which the AI on this is pretty good. It basically looks at the scene, 
recognizes what it is and then kind of changes the color and textures uh, to go along with it. There's also a dynamic shot mode. You have your standard filters here, different options. And then you have the settings, timer, tilt shift, which here goes tilt shift. I don't really like the tilt shift here. I'm telling you, it does not look real. The straighten, I never really found it to work all that great. Group selfie is cool though. So if you have a couple people and everybody wants to be in the shot, you have one person on the edge kind of take a shot and then you take another photo and it kind of shows it lines up and then uh, you can then it will stitch the photos together and give you all the people that are there in the shot. It's great. 48 megapixel mode needs to be activated right there. And what that does is essentially it gives you the full sensor. I don't use it very often. Uh, I found that it did not enhance photos as much. However, if you have a well-lit scene and a steady hand, go ahead and use that and you'll be happy. Alrighty, so let's go. There's the portrait mode, which gives you a few lighting effects. You can change, here's the lighting effects here. And then you can change the digital f-stop, the aperture, try to get you more bokeh, but uh, you know. And then you have some beautify, which, uh, you know, it's fun. <laughs> night mode's all right. Night mode allows you to basically stitch together some photos at night, and then it will sharpen them kind of work together and sharpen them. Here's a here's a standard photo at night, and then here is a night shot at night, and you can see the differences. There is a lot of sharpening there. <laughs> Square, pretty standard. Panorama, again, standard. Pro is great on this because it gives you full options for the different lenses, gives you white balance, gives you the shutter speed, and ISO. You have full control over all of those. Easy access to 48 megapixel, easy access to filters, Easy access to the flash. Really, really good here. I like the pro mode on this camera and certainly recommend it. So now that we've taken a look at the rear camera, let's take a look at the front facing camera. This is a uh, 20 megapixel lens. A lot of the same modes are available. Short video is available, but it doesn't give you all of the options that you would, you would, you don't have obviously the ultra wide lens, but it's pretty wide as it is. You have the beautify effects and the, uh, the little, little magic stickers from TikTok. All righty. Also, you can change the speeds, so that's great. Video quality, you only have 720p and 1080p at 30 frames per second. And then the photo mode, you again have AI and HDR uh, listed as group selfie. It will tell you your age and your gender. <laughs> just by looking at you and then it will give you a score based on what it thinks so your score on what it thinks of you <laughs> okay there you go that's 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 some fun stuff there again you have portrait mode so you can do uh, the different portraits uh, which is pretty good so on this you can see that it's given some some fake bokeh there that's pretty fun uh night shot does not work I don't try it, <laughs> even though it's listed. Square mode, panorama, again, does not work. Uh, and pro mode does not work. So there you go. All right, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the video and photo samples.